Welcome to the iShop Davy podcast, where we're enhancing the positive local buying experiences for the residents of Davy County, North Carolina. When you choose to spend your money, you have many places to choose from. This podcast reminds you to spend your money here because Davy County is home to great customer service, quality business products, and innovative business leaders. The iShop Davy podcast is introducing you to these leaders each week. My name is Chuck Taylor, your host for the iShop Davy podcast. Thank you for joining us this season. We're focusing on the service-based businesses that enhance the well-being of our county. All right, so we're here today with Thomas Johnson of The Resource. We're very excited to have you here because you've got a big story to tell about how you all are helping residents of Davy County and you're wearing a couple of hats. So welcome, Thomas, to the show, first of all. Thanks for having me, Chuck. (laughs) Glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about what the resource does. How do you guys help out people here in Davie County? Well, Chuck, we're a staffing agency, and a a lot of people aren't familiar with exactly what a staffing agency is, but uh, we help both job seekers as well as businesses in the community. From the job seeker standpoint, we offer several different employment avenues that individuals may not otherwise be able to find on their own. Traditional staffing has, has always kind of been temporaries is the term you hear and that's what's commonly associated with it sure while we do have those jobs we do so much more than just that okay temporary staffing we'll have folks that come in looking for for summer work Mm -hmm. Uh, we have students and teachers coming in right now that's really hot at the moment right we also do temp to hire placements and those are for individuals that want to come in and and maybe sort of try out a job before they buy it, so to speak. Gotcha. They want to research it before they get long-term into the company. Absolutely. It gives you a chance to come in and and see the culture, Mm -hmm. see what that company is like, and if it's a good long-term fit for you, and and also for the employer as well. That's smart. We also have direct hire solutions as well for niche skills. You know, maybe there's a welder or a maintenance person or a a human resources professional or Mm -hmm. someone like that 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 has a niche skill. We can help get them placed as well. Gotcha. So uh, the other side of that question is uh, how we help businesses in the okay. county. We actually find labor, of course. I'll give you an example. When a business puts up a post on Career Builder or uh, Indeed or something like that, mm. they run that post for 30 days. They can have three to 400 applicants. Wow. And it's just overwhelming. You can imagine with everything they're doing, they just don't always have time to sift through those and, and sort out and sort of separate the wheat from the chaff. We do that heavy lifting for them. Okay. Um, and and that's saving them time. Absolutely. And it, it really kind of giving some productivity and efficiency to the business. Definitely. Okay. All right. Cost-saving measure as well. We we make it simple for them. They tell us what they need. We'll go out, do the heavy lifting, maybe narrow their candidate search. And mm-hmm. in the end, we can present them hopefully with, you know, maybe three to five qualified candidates that they can interview and make their selection from there. The key word being qualified. Qualified. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've gotten very good at that, I'd like to think. Today's labor market is very tight and there's mm-hmm. there's not always a lot to choose from, but that's where we come in and, and hopefully making folks' lives a little easier. Right. And so you guys are resourcing very well. That's great because we're calling this the resource. <laughs> nice. See what you did uh, there. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> um, and, and Davie County is in a really unique spot as far as jobs and the people to fill them. Do you want to talk to that just a bit? Sure. Absolutely. You know, the labor market nationally is, is very tight right now. Davie County, if you've been to any of the economic development presentations we have recently, we've we've grown by, by 30% in job growth over the past several years. And it's wow. it's amazing. It's, it's great opportunity, but it just means it's more and more challenging to find those, like you said, qualified mm-hmm. uh, workers. And it's, it's a great opportunity for us. When I started with a resource back in 2014, I think unemployment in the county was around 6.2% off mm-hmm. the top of my head. And uh, I believe last I checked, we're down around 3.8 right Which now. Which is basically so, no unemployment. Right, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's, it's definitely a challenge. And I can see where this comes in huge because if I'm a business leader, I'm a business owner, and I've got my HR people tied up going through resume after resume, when you've got all these people who are applying and the pool really is, is kind of small, sometimes you've got to dig and sift through some people who are highly unqualified Absolutely. for work. And what you're looking at is here's the trade, here's the need. Let's get you people so that you're only having to sift through those you really want to hire. Correct. It is still a challenging move on their part, but we hope to uh, remove some of the complexity for them. Cool. All right. So we kind of answered this question in the last one a little bit, and and people are learning more about Davie County as we talk about it. But why have you chosen to do business in Davie County? 
Well, I'd, I'd like to answer that in two ways if I can. Sure. Uh, from a personal perspective, it, it just made sense. I'm currently a, a Davie County resident. You know, I have grandparents born here. I have family here. Nice. Uh, my grandfather worked in Davie County his whole life. Wow. Um, so I was a military child, and uh, when I got married and it was time to start a family, I, I really couldn't find anywhere better than Davie that I wanted to do that. Woohoo! Eric, yeah. go Davie. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we have great schools, uh, great local businesses, and a, and a really peaceful, inviting environment. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Davie County has a genuine hometown American feel, and, and you just don't get that everywhere. Sure. Okay. So that's the personal side. Sure. From a business perspective, so I'll back up and give you a little bit of a history lesson here. So the resource opened in 1979 wow. in Winston-Salem. Okay. We did our first agreement with a Davie County customer in 2002, okay. and uh, that led us to open here in 2004. Uh, wow. Todd Freeman opened this office, and uh, it's been a good run ever since. We've developed a lot of relationships. It's just, it's been really positive experience for us. Now, I'm going to pause you right there, Thomas, because what you're telling me is you open up this office prior to the housing bubble and the collapse of the job market in 2008 through 2010. You stayed open through that time period, and you've been able to manage not only through when there were no jobs to now where there are more jobs and there are people to fill them, and you're still employed. Absolutely. <laughs> right, and it's a great uh, job. It's it, good. It's funny. We always, as an industry, we always seem to be on the losing end of the stick. We either have way <laughs> too many jobs and not enough people or right. way too many people and not enough jobs. Um, so it's, it's definitely a challenging role. It's not for the faint of heart, but um, we have managed to survive. And a lot of that's in part to the great relationships we've built with some of the great businesses here in Davie. Okay. Well, that's a great segue to our next question, which is, why did you decide to get into this business? Yeah, it's, it's funny you ask that. I had previously worked in the medical device industry. I was in that business for probably about eight years, uh, wore a lot of different hats again, and I did a lot of hiring. And all of my hiring was almost exclusively through employment agencies. Okay. And it really opened my eyes to the benefit of using them, uh, the convenience. It made it easy uh, mm-hmm. to try and narrow the search down. I have also worked for a staffing agency years ago. So I felt like I knew both sides of that coin. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell people I know how the other side of the desk feels. Right. And I really thought, wow, I can bring that experience to this Mm -hmm. industry and uh, really help people from both sides of the desk. I think that's a value. So so tell me a little bit about that. I mean, if you want to get a job through a staffing agency, you've walked that road, you've kind of felt it. What does that process feel like if you're trying to get employed through a staffing agency, trying to get in to a place where you can work and take care of your family? I mean, what does that feel like? Honestly, I, I think it's pretty easy. I mean, there, there's challenges. We all have obstacles or barriers to employment, as they say. But if somebody's willing to come in and spend the time with us, we feel we can help them find gainful employment. So, Thomas, that's great information to allow us to understand more about the resource. I think that as people try to understand staffing in the larger scope, not just in Davie County, but through across the United States, tell us a little bit about how your industry is vital to our economy. Oh, absolutely, Chuck. Uh, right now, the U.S. contingent labor market, it's, it's a $140 billion industry. Okay. Um, wow. It's massive. It's, it's, you know, of course, even larger worldwide. And they're predicting it's not going anywhere anytime soon. You know, I heard a keynote speaker say uh, recently that in the next 10 years, 25% of all open positions in the United States will be filled with some form of contingent labor, whether it's wow. 1099, staffing, you know, something like that. So it's, it's definitely a portion of the market that's expected to grow. Mm-hmm. The benefit to companies with the ease and helping them sort of navigate some of the regulation, the Affordable Care Act and mm-hmm. things like that, they're all things that we bring to the table that they may not be prepared for. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And there's flexibility on the part of the applicant, the person who's getting staffed, right? So they've got the opportunity to work in different fields, different business types. If they don't get tied into a business maybe that they don't fit with, they still get other options. You're advocating for them to find a place that works for them. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you've heard this term. It's a new catchphrase. They're calling it the gig economy. The gig economy. Yeah, the gig economy. So it's one of the largest segments of of the employment economy that's grown. And it's folks that want to try something. You know, Mm -hmm. I'll do this over here for a week or I'll do this over here. Um, We can enable that in some ways through temporary staffing. You'll talk to folks as well who who feel that staffing makes them more employable. Mm. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, skills gap, something we're all facing right Right. now. You know, Um, where do I find people who have experience, Right. actual physical experience? Well, a lot of people don't have that. And they say, well, how do I get it if you don't give me a chance? Right. Well, temping is a great way to do that. You can come in and and be an admin assistant for a Mm -hmm. week. You can come in and and go do warehouse work for a week. And and you can garner all these different skill sets. And then when you go to your next interview or, or something that you're aspiring to do, you can say, hey, I've, I've done a little bit of this, I've done a little bit of that, and 
people feel that makes them more invaluable as, a, as an applicant. You know what? You're not saying this, but here's a little something I'm hearing. And, and if this becomes profitable, you can come back and give me a whole bunch of money for it. But, <laughs> um, you know, part of what one of the things that we're struggling with in the United States is we have a lot of kids that are going to college and they're trying to pick degrees in high school, not knowing whether or not it fits them, going to college, getting a ton of debt, and then going and not working in the field that they studied. You know, it almost sounds like getting out of high school, working some temp work, trying to feel like what is it like to be in these fields, and then going to college, pursuing the degree field that they really want to work in may be advantageous. You may be able to set them up for success. Absolutely. Uh, You know, we we love internships. Mm -hmm. Um, We love summer workers. I don't always have internships to offer, but when I do, people snatch them up. Sure. Um, It's a great way to come in and get an idea and target what you want. You know, I don't know what the current statistic is, but uh, back when I was in school, they used to say that an average average student will change their major eight times before they graduate. Wow. You imagine all of the, not necessarily wasted, but spent energy going Mm -hmm. into those different areas until you find what you're truly after and what you're truly good at. We even have assessments in the office that can help a person kind of figure out how they're wired and what they may have a propensity towards. Wow. You know, could be of a benefit to them to kind of help narrow their search and and target one specific thing that they want to go after. I want to come back to that. Right now, we're going to take just a brief moment. And because we need to say thank you to the sponsors who have made this show uh, a possibility. So let's thank them and come back. I want to talk about those assessments. People are odd. We all work differently. Ever feel misunderstood in the workplace? Do you ever think that conversations could be easier? Understanding personalities and preferences can help you lead others better, negotiate conflicts seamlessly, and motivate coworkers to success. If you want to learn more, listen to the Personalities in the Workplace podcast as Tomoji Jackson of Sage Garden Care Center interviews me, Chuck Taylor. Follow the link in the show notes or visit us online at sagegardencare.org to begin listening today. Want to know about the Swiskid Group? We're a brokerage and auction firm that specializes in exclusive seller representation, asset appraisals, real estate evaluation, digital marketing, video promotion, and the sale of both real and personal assets. From the coast of North Carolina to the mountains, we have sold large tracts of land, multi-million dollar assets, celebrity estates, and even mom and dad's home and contents. Give us a call, 336-751-4444, or find us on the web at theswicegoodgroup.com. All right. Thank you to the sponsors who have made the show possible. So, Thomas, I, you've really got my interest peaked here. You've got assessments that clearly are going to be helpful to these candidates that come in because they learn more about themselves and they may not really have a forum to do that anywhere else. And you've got businesses who have employees coming in who know what their work style and their work ethic may be before they ever show up for the first job. That's hugely advantageous. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's available on our website. You know, let me kind of flip that on you there. We use it for the businesses as well. You know, you just mentioned that and it caused me to think of that. You know, we can go into a business and evaluate a position and then provide an assessment for a customer to use to kind of view the people that they currently have working Hmm. in that position. They can then find out how their A performers are wired and then try to hire another A performer that is wired similarly just to help them narrow their search. Oh, that's creative. So not only are you resourcing companies with staff individuals, but you're allowing them to determine like who's doing this well, how do we get more people who do this well? So you've become a resource beyond just <laughs> staffing, but qualified staffing and getting better individuals working the jobs that maximizes productivity, efficiencies in the workplace. That's huge. I'm glad you said that, Chuck. We, we used to be called Temporary Resources when we first opened in Moxville. And gotcha. in 2014, we rebranded as the resource for that very reason, because yeah. we are so much more than just temporary staffing. The assessment works wonderful for companies that want to do leadership development, mm-hmm. kind of helps you understand how those around you are wired and why Susie may act the way she does. Right. You know, Susie's not just being, you know, wild today. She, <laughs> right. She's really kind of wired this way. And it helps you kind of figure out how to be well received is, yeah, sure. is the way I like to put it by individuals. And how to best utilize people because there's a big cost in the hire and fire cycle that we put people in. But if you can find a place where a person can work well, suited to their strengths, then you're really going to get more profitability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. 
All right, so that leads us into our last question. And I know you've got to talk about this on a couple of different sides because you're working not only just the staffing part, but you're also working on the business side. What's it like for a customer, be it a person who wants to be hired or a company looking for employees, what's it like for them to interact with your company? What's that customer experience like? Well, I like to think our customer experience is great. We have staff in the office that strives to be warm and inviting to everybody that comes in. Our job seeking process this day and age has become so impersonal. Hmm. Um, you know, you apply online and, and right. your resume goes in this black hole and right. you, you never hear anything back and click here and you click there. And it's, it's just very impersonal. Hmm. Um, anybody that applies with our office through our website, we call. Yep. Um, we try to invite them in, talk to them, figure out exactly what they're looking for. And, nice. and that experience includes us, as you said earlier, being an advocate on behalf of that employee. Right. A lot of times we have avenues into companies that you may not get through through Indeed or Career Builder. We have those relationships relationships, those connections. Right. I can approach somebody and say, hey, I know you're not hiring right now, or I don't know that you have a need, but but I've got this individual that came in to see me and they're stellar. And right. if you have a need, you might want to meet them. And that can open doors for people. Mm -hmm. So it's a big benefit for the applicant. The other side of that for our employers, our biggest thing is our service. Uh, we think we offer an uh, unparalleled level of service. Our, our okay. staff is available to our clients in a lot of cases, 24 hours a day. Wow. My phone has, has rang many times at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Your wife loves uh, that. Yeah, she does. So does my daughter. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, it's a part of the job. Right. Um, but we try to be available. You know, okay. We get up and we go when, when we're needed. And like you said earlier, we do so much more than staffing. We consider ourselves consultant partners to our okay. company. Our staff is trained in employment law, human resources, wow. occupational health safety uh, training, things like that. So we really run the gamut and can bring a lot to the table. I love it when a client calls me and asks me a question that mm -hmm. is just not related to an individual I have with them. They're like, hey, right. you know, can you help me with this? Or yeah. have you ever experienced this situation? Mm -hmm. um, and we really collaborate and, and think we provide meaningful solutions to our customers that way. Absolutely. And I'm hearing several things there. One of the things I really like is that personal touch you have with applicants that come in the door, because then when you're connecting back with these businesses, you're not just looking at a piece of paper. You're not just saying, hey, this person looks qualified, because we know that a piece of paper doesn't sure. always tell us <laughs> what we know about a person. But when you get that face-to-face -face interaction and you're able to say, yeah, I met with them, I talked with them, you know, what I see lines up with what I see here on this piece of paper, you've got a qualified person here. And again, that saves HR reps at businesses so much time instead of having to weed through that on their own. Absolutely. When, when they receive a resume, I've typically talked to that individual, um, whether it be on the phone or in person. And, and that helps us get a feel for personality, cultural fit. Right. And those are things you can't always gauge on a piece of paper until you actually meet someone and understand what their goals are and what their right. desires are. And, and that helps us make good matches. I said it earlier, I think, I think we're, we're matchmakers, essentially, and, nice. and uh, we need to be the best at what we do. Right. Mat so a match made in heaven right there. Absolutely. In the, That's the goal. In, in the business world. <laughs> So the resource is truly a place that is the resource for so much information that businesses or applicants need to be able to maximize the workforce. And you're bringing that into Davie County, making our personal economy here so much more vital. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it, Chuck. Thanks for having me. So one more thing is people got to know how to get in touch with you. So okay. I would be remiss not to ask that. How do people reach out to the infamous Thomas Johnson? <laughs> well, they can always stop by our office. We're okay. right here at 562 Valley Road. Okay. Our office number is 336-751-5179. And then, of course, our website is theresource.com. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Thomas, for coming in. Chuck, it's been a pleasure. Story. Yes, and uh, we wish you the best of success in all that you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the iShop Davy podcast today. We're proud to showcase our innovative business leaders who are enhancing our wonderful local community. For show notes, including links to resources we discussed on today's show, head to iShopDavy.com. Also, take a moment to subscribe to iShop Davy wherever you listen to your podcast so you won't miss any of our upcoming shows. We love to spread the word, so we encourage you to tell a friend about our show. Keep up on all our upcoming events by liking the Davy County Chamber of Commerce on Facebook. We'll see you next time on the iShop Davy podcast.